Power people was popping. Wow, you is that you? Oh, wow, you look amazing. Let me give yourself a round of applause for looking so good for me. Wow, because I'm in a suit, but I'm always in a suit to look good for you. But you're looking even better for me. Are you sure you didn't do that for yourself? You did that for me. <laughs> Now, I know a lot of you probably wondered where have I been. I haven't uploaded a video in, I don't even want to check how long it's been. I, I don't even want to go on my YouTube channel, but and make no mistakes about it. I'm back. Twenty twenty four will be the year where you break free from anything that's held you back since the pandemic started. I'm going to say it again. Twenty twenty four will be the year that you break away from anything that's held you back since the pandemic has started. This will be your breakthrough year. This will be your breakthrough year. This will be your breakthrough year. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter where you are in life right now. This will be your breakthrough year. Claim it. Claim it. Claim it. <laughs> Claim it. Anyways, I saw this documentary on Netflix. And as soon as I finish watching it, I'm like, this is what I'm gonna return to YouTube with. This is the first video I'm gonna return to YouTube with. Now I have other videos in the vault that's coming. I'm actually in the process of editing them. <laughs> but this is... <laughs> but this is the video. I'm like, this, this is gonna kick off everything right here. So let's get into it. Willpower Reviews, The Greatest Night in Pop. Big shout out to the director, and I don't wanna butcher his name. I think it's Bao Nguyen, Bao Nguyen. Uh, he's the director of this documentary, and I didn't recognize the name, but when I clicked on, when I looked him up online, I saw that he did the The Water documentary, which was a really fantastic documentary on Bruce Lee, and he's blown me away again with The Greatest Night in Pop, so anything I've seen from him so far has been stellar, so shout out to the director of this documentary. Now, what is this documentary about? This is a documentary that showcases the making of We Are The World. We are the world. We are the children, we are the ones who make a brighter day, so let's start giving, oh yeah. <laughs> There's a tree. I would highly suggest you go watch this documentary first and then come see this video because I'm reviewing this documentary. So if you haven't seen this documentary, why are you watching a review? <laughs> of this documentary. You know, in my mind, it might have taken months for them to put this together. So the fact that they did this in one night, I didn't know that. Did any of you know this? We Are The World was recorded in one night, in one session, after the American Music Awards that Lionel Richie hosted that very night, they recorded We Are The World. I did not know that. I did not know Lionel Richie hosted the American Music Awards that very same night, came off from hosting and then went to lead We Are The World's recording. I didn't know that. And it was riveting to watch this unfold because Lionel Richie, man, the energy he had. I need to, first of all, <laughs> clap for Lionel Richie because this man hosted the American Music Awards, had high energy, was winning awards that same night as he's hosting. And then when the show is over, just when you think, oh, he's probably, you know, tired, gonna go to sleep. He goes to the studio to not only record for We Are The World, but he's leading everyone in We Are The World. And his leadership skills, Lionel Richie's leadership skills that are shown throughout this documentary deserves just a round of applause in my opinion. All night long, all night, all night, all night, all night. All Night Long by Lionel Richie, inspired All Mine by Willpower. When I wake up, I'll be all mine. One thing Lionel Richie said that was really interesting to me, and I am paraphrasing here, because again, you need to go watch the documentary if you want the word for word. <laughs> Lionel Richie describes how he never asked, hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of this song? Right? What do you think of this part? He'd never asked this question. Because if you were to ask everybody their opinion and you know their suggestions, there would be 50 versions of We Are The World. He knew what this song was, and he knew what this song was not. 
So anytime somebody would suggest something, he would be like, no, that's not what we're doing. And I thought that was great leadership because you never get the sense that he, he was controlling or imposing on people. He had an approach that showcased a humble and really soft-spoken, fun-loving leadership style. And I love that because I believe the first thing they recorded as a group was the chorus. And <laughs> if you go and listen to the song, it's, it's in a high key. The chorus, it starts in the key and then it gets a little higher. When it goes to, there's a choice we're making, it goes higher, okay? I just sang it in a lower key, but me, I'm a baritone, right? And for those of you who don't know, baritone is a lower register for, you know, male singers. And in the pop world, you know, the most successful pop stars that are male are usually tenors, right? So I completely understood <laughs> when they started to sing the chorus and it was getting too high and certain people were like, <laughs> it's too high for me. <laughs> I completely understand. As a baritone, I understand. And the advice they were given was, and I forget there was there was like a saying or a one line that this guy said, but pretty much he was like, just sing it until it's too high for you, then just be quiet. <laughs> a lot of people are like, this is too high for me. <laughs> one thing that really caught me off guard in this documentary was Stevie Wonder in this documentary. Because I know he's part of the song, but to see how he was acting in the process, I wasn't expecting that. Because I'm used to listening to a very powerhouse, emotional Stevie Wonder. When I listen to ballads like Lately, or when I listen to songs like Whereabouts, or, you know, Superstitious, or Part-Time Lover, there's a certain, you know, emotional depth to him. And I don't really hear or get from him like a comedy vibe when I listen to his music. He is a musical genius, everyone knows that. And to see him in the studio, laughing and at some points they also showed him like purposely messing up his lines and i was like what and eventually you do see quincy kind of snap at him like all right all right stevie please stop and stevie keeps going and I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like no way stevie wonder is like that and by the way i'm sorry if you knew this and i didn't and you're like will how did you not know this i didn't know Smokey robinson was part of we are the world Smokey Robinson, by the way, and this is another reason why I'm so happy I get to make this video because I studied and continue to study so many of these artists that I'm like, without a lot of these people who are in this documentary, I wouldn't be the man that I am. I wouldn't be the artist that I am, the singer, songwriter, the producer that I am today. It was thanks to studying Stevie Wonder, studying Michael Jackson, studying Smokey Robinson, studying Ray Charles, Diana Ross, Michael McDonald, these people inspire me in ways you don't understand. Like if we were to take everyone in that room, I think that would make up maybe like a good 60 to 65% of my musical influences. Maybe a little, maybe that's a little too high now because I have a lot, I have so many, I have so many, I have so many, but it's a big number. And for anyone who's been following me and watching my content, you already know like Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder, these are two artists that have inspired me heavily. I've made countless videos capturing their essence. Michael Jackson. There's a place in your heart and I know that it is love. Stevie Wonder. Over time, I've been building my castle of love. But there's also a lot of artists that I've never mentioned yet. I haven't made videos about them yet. And this is why I'm like, okay, this is the perfect time to do so. We are the world. So many artists here that have inspired me. One artist that I haven't really mentioned, but is one of my favorite artists of all time. And one of my biggest inspirations and influences is Smokey Robinson. Smokey Robinson. <laughs> Which by the way, he has a funny, he made me laugh the hardest in this documentary. The part with Smokey Robinson that made me laugh harder than any other part in this documentary is one point Michael Jackson, you know, who, by the way, came up with the lyrics for the song. Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie wrote this together and they detailed the story in the documentary. They tried to get a hold of Stevie Wonder to help write the song and for weeks, they couldn't get a hold of Stevie Wonder. Where was Stevie Wonder? So Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson get together and they write the song, they come up with it. And I think Lionel Richie even admits that Michael Jackson came up with the line, we are the world. And Lionel Richie plays instruments. He was playing the piano. Michael Jackson didn't play any instruments, but he did have the music in his head and he would hum all the parts. What was interesting was they didn't really have all the lyrics for it yet. So they did have like the melody, the template they wanted the song to sound like, but they were still even on the day of the recording, I believe changing certain words around because at one part, Michael Jackson, there's a part of the song where he throws out a line, cause that's what we're given. 
And Smokey Robinson, he's like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Smokey Robinson stops and he's like, that's what we're given. That makes no sense. Giving what? What are we giving? That makes no sense. <laughs> Smokey Robinson is such a legend. During the pandemic, I had so much time on my hands that I went and studied so many artists and checked out every single album they made from start all the way to finish because I had that time on my hands during the pandemic. Smokey Robinson was one of them. So it was great to see him in this documentary because if I didn't have that time to study him, I, I wouldn't be too familiar with a lot of his work. I knew a lot of his songs, but to go into a deep dive of his discography and listen to everything, study everything multiple times, whew, Smokey Robinson has so many great songs, man. A lot of underrated songs I, I, I think that a lot of people don't even know of. But I heard the Miracles stuff. I listened to all the Miracles and then his solo career, every decade he's just bringing classics amazing music and he had that album where i, I love the title by the way it's called where there's smoke <laughs> smoky robinson where there's smoke that's such a great album there's so many great productions on there i could go on and on about smoky robinson i'll probably make a video about him another day but he was the only person in this documentary to really stand up to michael jackson when michael jackson had a suggestion that he personally felt wasn't good he didn't hesitate to stop everyone and say, wait, 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 what are we giving? That makes no sense. I rewinded that part so many times. <laughs> when he said that and then they changed the lyrics, I was like. <laughs> but with Smokey Robinson, he knew Michael Jackson for many years, like since he was a little kid. So I think having that rapport with him made him a little bit more comfortable because if, if he just hadn't met Michael Jackson that night, I don't know if he would, but Lionel Richie, Smokey Robinson knew Michael Jackson for many, many, many years. And what was interesting is they show clips of the American Music Awards. Michael Jackson wasn't there. And he had a lot of awards, you know, Michael Jackson, Prince, Michael Jackson, Prince, who was gonna win. Prince, I believe they show him winning the awards, but Michael Jackson was at the studio first recording. Michael Jackson was at the studio first and Diana Ross was the last to leave the studio because she didn't want it to end. What I did find interesting, when they played the early, early, early demo of We Are The World, I was listening to this like, this sounds like a country song. It doesn't sound like the R&B soulful song we heard after, the pop song after. It really sounded like a straight up country song. And when they played a certain clip of the early demo, I'm like, oh wow, this sounds very country. And to hear how it turned out in the end, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And everyone brought it, every voice, sounded amazing and i love how they detail how they organize the ordering of the voices they pretty much listen to everyone who was going to be at the studio and they listen for the similar voices and they kind of put them together okay this voice would sound great after this voice this voice would sound great after this voice okay this range is a little higher so we need to put them here I love that. It was really great. The craftsmanship and the love that was put into this song for a greater cause. I think that's something that every great artist wants to be a part of. I know I do. And you know what didn't, what really didn't occur to me when I was watching this documentary is the artists that aren't alive anymore. There are artists that like Michael Jackson, for example, I'm watching this documentary and not once did it occur to me. Oh, Michael Jackson, oh, it's too bad he's dead, you know, no, no. I looked at every artist as if they were still alive today. I didn't even think of the artists who passed away. Like when I saw Ray Charles, when I saw James Ingram, Tina Turner, it didn't register till the end of the documentary when they were mentioning everyone who's not here anymore. And Lionel Richie had a very powerful quote about how his dad said to really appreciate coming home because one day the home will be there, but the people in it won't. And I, I got emotional at that part. And then the documentary ends and they show a list of artists who I, I was watching, like completely forgetting that some of them had passed away. And I see this and I'm like, wow, they still live on. They were part of something. And this is mentioned in this documentary. They successfully contributed to something that will live on forever. And there's nothing greater, I believe, than participating in something like that, I believe every great artist wants or strives to do so. And that is something I try my best to strive for. Anytime I'm creating art, I always think about, okay, is this gonna live past the era I'm creating this? And it's not always easy. You don't always know what's gonna be a hit or not because a lot of these artists in 
We Are The World created their own humanitarian songs that, you know, didn't have the staying power as We Are The World. You know, Michael Jackson had some great ones like Man In The Mirror, Heal The World, which I did cover, by the way. And I love those songs, but We Are The World is still, I believe, my favorite collaboration humanitarian song. And I think at number two, I might have to put Lean On Me. That's a great one. Looking at Ray Charles, I don't know, it just hits me in a way. Seeing Ray Charles and he was laughing and smiling and knowing what he went through and the era he came in before these other artists who are younger than him. Think about what he went through and overcame. It's like this beauty. It's beauty and the tragedy. And the tragedy, there's triumph. So I, I, I really have to say that this documentary left me riveted, inspired, enthralled. And it came at the perfect timing. Like it just, like a meteor. It came out of nowhere at a time where I'm still healing from my voice. I don't know what's going on. And I get the good news that I'm medically cleared. And I just seen this documentary, so I'm charged up creatively. As I was watching this documentary, I came up with two new songs that just started playing in my head that I recorded. And I had to pause the documentary to record, like just a demo on my phone because I'm like, these are the songs I think that are missing on the project I'm working on right now. So all I could say is all in all, check out this documentary. I did say a lot that goes on in the documentary, but if you watch it, it's a brand new experience. Tell me what you thought about it. I also, yes, I did see the Michael Jackson 40, Thriller 40. The documentary just came out in December of 2023. I watched that, you know, when the date came out, detailing the making of the Thriller album. And there's a lot of things I didn't know as well. And I've been studying Thriller for so many years, decades at this point. So many life lessons in this documentary is a really positive thing to watch. You know, my time, these days is very limited because I have a lot I'm working on. But when I sit down and watch something, I just want to have an experience like this, where it's just uplifting, very insightful, challenging, emotional. I just love that. There's a lot of depth to this documentary and I would highly recommend it, especially for my artists out there. So if you have any questions or comments about this documentary or anything else, I know it's been a long time since you've seen me. I know a lot of you'll have a lot to say. So that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you with a new video soon. It's been a pleasure entertaining y'all. And don't forget that where there's a will, there's a way. And there's always a way with willpower. Hit that like button. I want